What up dudes, welcome back. This is of course SugaJRPG here and today we're gonna be talking about Baldur's Gate 3 again and there's gonna be a lot of hardcore spoilers in this video so if you haven't played the game through yet, maybe come back later. And what I talked about in my review of the game, gonna link that in the corner, was I really wanted to see an expansion and DLC for this game because I'm just very much in love with everything that they have done and I feel like there's a lot of cool things that they could add like goblins and some of the other classes which are missing, two of them which I'm still missing and a couple of subclasses obviously. So there's a lot of content that they still can do inside this game which obviously opens up a lot of possibilities for different types of locations areas, classes, new quests, etc. But what turns out from recent data mining is that there's actually a lot of cut out content from the game, which makes me kind of believe that maybe Larian is very serious about actually doing this sort of an enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate 3. Like right now they're fixing a lot of these bugs, which a lot of them still exist after like four bug fix patches. But there's a bunch of this stuff which has been left out, which I want to talk about, which have been cut out from the game, which have been data mined through dialogues, NPCs, uh, sound files, a lot of things. So let's get started with 31 things, and this was a list compiled by a Steam user, kudos to this guy for basically digging out all of this information. And you can clearly see that there were a lot of quest lines and characters which kind of felt like maybe there's more in the story. Some of the dialogue like refers to a lot of things which could have been there. So what one of the things is the upper city of Baldur's Gate. So obviously in Act 3 we get to go in the Baldur's Gate and the kind of the outskirts of Baldur's Gate. And upper city is missing from the game, outside from the fact that once you go into the final battle you get to kind of fight in the area of the upper city, but you're not actually allowed to visit the upper city area. And this was cut out from the game and I think a lot of the um, assumptions were due to the performance issues on PS5 and also Xbox One not being really able to run really well on the Baldur's Gate and there are a lot of people been talking about that you should be running the city on Vulcan and things like that and I haven't experimented that on myself but you can clearly see that there are some frame rate drops on the city and maybe it should have been like covered into different types of zones which would have like maybe improved a bit of the loadings to be honest. So this was probably one of the things that was definitely left out. There was also a PC gamer reference where it says affluent upper city among other places which were you know mentioned in that article hinting that yeah upper city was supposed to be a big part of the game. I don't know how big of a zone would it have been maybe a bit smaller than lower city. It maybe could have been just like some big cathedral or some castle or something like that which could have like introduced some you know major villain boss battle optional thing which would have been good but I think upper city would be very cool to explore as well uh, second thing is Shar worship so you could have select Shar as your deity inside on you know on this character creation and there were some voice lines uh, recorded for this then there was um, another like ending for Carlax, so you kind of feel like the Carlax ending is not actually like super complete and like the way it was done and the way it actually ends and there's like voice files about this like in the upper city which is linked into Carlax Act 3 storyline which is very brief because you just kind of went to this blacksmith, what is his name, Damon and then it's kind of like done and it's still like in a failed state but maybe this is something that they're going to be fixing Another one is the Minthara story. So Minthara was meant to have a much deeper story, including a pregnancy of some kind. I'm not sure it was it the, the origin character's child or what exactly was coming to be. Some type of demon type of thing, what type of fostering into. But you can clearly feel that Minthara probably is a bit of a minor character. Another one, Halsin was supposed to be um, have a bit more uh, bigger, you know, storyline with the Druid Circle going into Act Three, perhaps. You know, she he talks about the new Arch Druid gets get invited into the Druidic Circle or something. That person or that character is not even shown in the game, and not, not to my knowledge at least. So that's something that uh, maybe could have uh, appeared. Then we have Raphael and he was supposed to be some type of merchant in Act 3 where you could like remove your tadpole altogether and use soul coins as a currency to basically buy very very powerful weapons and items from him 
and like other artifacts. Then we have Avernus being like a total entire area in Act 3, basically similar size in Underdark. This would have been really really cool uh, element to be added and you know there's a lot to be explored there but this could be definitely be the one of the hells could be a, like a DLC expansion because we haven't really like um, Zariel could be something that could be a boss in the future or like big part about like a DLC plotline or something. The Dark Urge was supposed to be kind of part of the storyline with the Dead 3 storyline and kind of like there's some you know changes there as well. Then we have the Omelum's Ring. This was kind of minor one, but the Omelum's Ring could have, like, in the early access, it was able to basically block the tadpole entirely, for example, so it could not grow, not grow stronger. You could not use the illithid powers, for example. And that was um, kind of like an interesting one. Omelum also another, like, a good side character, which maybe wasn't really explored. I mean, he gets to be... Um, does he actually show up in the last fight? I don't remember. Um, and then we have uh, the ball and Orin versus the crash. So in the uh, there was like some type of fight between the Githyanki and Baal's forces in Act Two or something like that. I think it was probably meant to be in the monastery or something like that. And you could like choose your side. Then there was the uh, Orin and the dragon. So Orin was meant to be the person that will actually corrupt the Githyanki with a dragon and this would have been a fight instead of like being thrown into the final boss as you see in the final boss there's the corrupted dragon so that's what's supposed to appear earlier maybe it kind of makes sense because the dragon is kind of clumsy in this very small you know tugged area in the final battle when she's like leaping and flying he's like just going two meters one, one way or another it's kind of weird and the hack coven was basically supposed to be like a larger storyline like more connected um more hags i assume and maybe you know like a like a boss of the hack on the on the ethel there's the the letter m which happens in the you know um the note files which are mentioned in a couple of the things that you can find on her hideouts so we don't know exactly what the M refers to. A lot of like epilogue scenes which were like data mined and kind of deleted. There were supposed to be like 17,000 ending variations that Larian told us about. But they seems to be absent about from the current game. Uh, Cazador, the vampire, was supposed to play a lot huger role in the upper city. I think there's like talk about in some of the text files or in the books and the letters about like political power and all that type of stuff. And him being moved into upper city kind of makes sense to me because the zone that he is in is kind of like a random that the cathedral or whatever he is in is in just random location in the lower city like feels very squished in so this definitely feels like a lot more that yeah there was some type of a lower city uh upper city location for him originally and then we had the Baynot cultists, so having the both Baal and Merkel cultists rather heavily. But, you know, the Bane uh, was kind of reduced to Gortash alone. And these are like a lot of models and things that were existing, but they were cut out from the game. Minsk also could have been recorded at the end of Act 1. To be honest, I think they should have introduced him in Act 2. I don't know why, ex how exactly, but he kind of makes sense that he comes in Act 3, but he doesn't have any questline or storylines, to be honest. So I think in a lot of ways, it's really bad to introduce characters in Act 3. I think it's like a really bad idea because this is not like a lot of a lot of fun there and then there is like dialogues and events like thousands of lines of dialogues were cut out from from the game um and then like the ball merkel and bane as deities and the cleric had interaction with them that was something that was also cut out then there's obviously the daisy daisy was supposed to be kind of not exactly being the emperor, but actually play a, some type of a different role in like the subconsciousness of the tadpole, and there would be like an ending where you could like go into the seramorphosis, and you know that would be like one of the game endings, ba basically. Um, so that that was something that they were building out as well. 
Um, then there were some changes to the illicit worms and how it interacted with the companions. So originally, like you were like able to accept or refuse the illicit gifts independently of the player choices. So that was something that was altered. Also, Jahera's romancing options, those were basically cut out uh, from the game last minute. And this character I didn't like at all, by the way, and I think, you know, I, I think she was in Baldur's Gate 2 or 1, and that's why, like, you know, she was brought in or something, but fundamentally, like, I think she added very little to the game, especially because she was already a druid, so was Halcyn, so two druids in the game, like, that doesn't add up at all. And then there is, like, the tadpole stuff so even when you do the tadpole upgrades you know that doesn't change the story but originally i think they were planning some type of things where actually like going full into the tadpole forms and everything like this would have differences and changes in to the actual last leg of the game but basically whatever you use them or not this is going to have the same ending as of right now in Act 3, companion dialogues were pretty much dragged down a lot. A lot of that is missing or cut out. Cutscenes from Act 1 also cut out. The Nautiloid obviously was like cut out and made like the bridge scene and all those were thing things taken out from the early access. I don't want to have that back by the way. I think the Nautiloid is perfect the way it is right now. So this was actually a good change because it was like a lot more cohesive then there is the mole and raphael thing their contract and everything that is still existing in the game but it's kind of like very minor minuscule you can feel that this was kind of removed from that storyline from that uh character arc um then there is the raven queen the entire second part of the storyline i think this is referring to the the raven quest in act two where the character says if you do the right decisions that you will might you might meet him again but actually you don't uh, at least i don't know you do then there is like some dialogue that voice of bane actually has conversations with the character or something so there's some dialogue that exists for that then there is uh, the Wither's epilogue was meant to be narrated by Wither and he was supposed to be more of a like a parent in case you didn't know he will have a cutscene after the credits of the game right now so you know just so you know in case you missed it and you just closed the game after the credits started rolling and then la second lastly we had the crafting and crafting was supposed to be like a crafting bench inside the game and you can kind of find a bit of like yeah they added some crafting elements into the game and they are probably going to be doing this i think because all they like the the interface could be a bit better obviously but outside from that like all the things are there to basically have a proper blacksmithing system inside the game where you can craft different types of items and i think this is definitely coming in we obviously have the alchemy but i think there's going to be like a lot more broader crafting system added in post launch and then the last uh, thing was helia a halfling werewolf which was cut out from the game i mean we have a vampire and probably would have been actually pretty cool to have a halfling uh, inside the game and she was supposed to be like a red riding hood or something and some people speculated that this was the last companion and um, I can't remember the girl who plays the flute in act one one of the tieflings she was probably supposed to be also like a main character in the party being the part character and I think there was probably some other small companions which were cut out uh, from the game possibly so there's a lot of cut out content from the game uh, out of the things that i basically listed out here i'm curious to learn what do you think about what are the things you would have liked to see i think most people would have wanted to see the uh, upper city and as i said on my review obviously like this game is going to be perfect and after they like patch things through but in hindsight, I wish they would have maybe pushed out the release date for a month or two to basically hone out on the bugs and could have added out some of the content. But maybe in the future, we're going to be getting the upper city, we're going to be getting more companions, and we're going to be getting those classes and subclasses which are missing, and goblins, obviously. And I wouldn't actually mind to have some of the other smaller minor races as playable as well. At least modders would get to do something around there. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more Baldur's Gate content and other GRPG RPG content on the channel. Thanks for watching. I will be seeing you in the next video.